If you think your nose is ugly, you're not alone. Ayo, nose job check. Darling. I really did a nose job. That'll be good for the economy. Apparently, no one is really happy with their nose. No one. Not even the prettiest queens like Bella Hadid, Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner, Blake Lively. And even though, surprisingly, I am happy with my nose now, growing up, I felt it was too wide and too flat, which did change a little through puberty and did become a lesser concern when I learned to be insecure about a sh ton of other things. <laughs> But all in all, it amazes me how normal nose jobs have become. Where when you see someone with a cute nose that fits the current beauty standard, your immediate thought is almost, wait, did they get their nose done? And how through platforms like TikTok, nose jobs are no longer a taboo, but more so a flex. Ayo, nose job check. How about now? Cause I'm up right now. You know what I got for Christmas? A Chanel and a trip to Central Pay. That's so last year. I got a nose job and some new fresh fillers. So let's chat about nose jobs today. The types of noses there are, the implied culture and fetishization behind the waves of plastic surgery, and the normalization of the quote unquote perfect nose, not only in celebrities, but for everyday people on social media. I want this nose. I, I need this nose. I would pay. I would pay to have this nose. Oh. Shit, I already have it. What is your nose shape? To start off, let's take a good look at all the different nose shapes in humans, shall we? We have the Greek nose, Roman nose or Acline nose, sloped nose, snub nose, hook nose, Nubian nose, bulbous nose, celestial nose. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but we'll elaborate on some of the more common nose shapes. The Roman nose is characterized by a straight bridge with a slight bump in the middle. It often has wide nostril openings and is commonly found in Mediterranean and Latin populations. The Greek nose has a curved bridge and long narrow nostrils is commonly seen in people with Caucasian descent. A snub nose has an uptuned shape with the tip of the nose pointing upwards to the sky. It's found in different ethnicities. The hook nose has a curved bridge and the lip pointing downwards, common among Mediterranean and Middle Eastern populations. A button nose has a short length and small size. It's more common in Asian and Scandinavian populations. The Nubian nose has a wider bridge with a wide base and is commonly found in people with African descent. Not Every nose will fit into one specific category and no nose shape is superior than the other. At the end of the day, our nose shapes serve the evolutionary purpose to help us breathe. And it really just depends on the climate that your ancestors lived in. Long and thin noses occurred in dry, cold areas where short and wide noses occurred in hot, humid areas. The theory is that narrower nostrils alter airflow in such a way that the mucus covered nasal membrane can warm and humidify the incoming air more efficiently. This will help individuals with narrower noses to survive better in colder climates. So WTF is the perfect nose. The celestial nose, aka the Barbie nose, is one of the most requested nose shapes identified by rhinoplasty patients today. This nose is relatively small with a curvature in the middle of the bridge and a slightly protruding tip. When done in a heavy-handed manner, the result can resemble a Michael Jackson nose. About 13% of people naturally have a celestial nose or a turned up nose. So why and how did it become the ideal nose? Culture and fetishization. Growing up in two completely different cultures, I always find it super interesting to see the different perspectives from both the Western and Eastern beauty standards and compare the similarities and differences. Here, regardless of culture, we need to take into consideration of classes and wealth. I literally interviewed a plastic surgeon in the past and he revealed that the pattern for the ideal nose, which is always changing, has everything to do with finding the new symbol of class and wealth. 
it used to be that only the rich and famous could get a nose job, right? They could afford it. The gist of it is, regardless of culture, we always want something that is rare. It was a way of showing that you had money or that you were someone by making your nose look unnaturally pretty. Mm. The more rare, the more value we place onto it. Not necessarily because it is inherently more beautiful or aesthetically superior. For Asians, because our natural nose bridges are flatter, the most popular procedure is to actually add height to the nose bridge and make our noses higher and bigger, striving for the more Eurocentric look. Whereas in the West, noses are already very prominent. The general goal is to shrink down and make them as petite as possible. Hence, the celestial nose and button noses are in favor. No. Even without plastic surgery, the standard protocol for contour in the West is to have the nose as narrow and petite as possible. It's almost a cross-cultural fetish for the exotic. Whatever is rare to the native culture becomes the hot thing that people want to add to their feature. The fetishization of exoticism, meaning having higher attraction towards something beyond the norm or standards of our ethnicity or group of community is nothing new. From an evolutionary standpoint, genetic diversity increases higher chances of survival, and this is prevalent in the Western beauty standards today. The fox eye from Asian descent mixed with the thick lips from African descent with a dash of freckles or two, yet having high and almost hollow Eurocentric cheekbones, aka a Frankowini of the globe. And the scary part is, as children, we've been hypnotized to these beauty standards throughout our consumption of media. Ever realize how Disney princesses have the narrow nose shape, the cute button nose, or natural fox eye? And how can we not mention Barbie? Since celestial nose is literally called the Barbie nose, it became ingrained in little girls' minds, including my own, that a small, elegant nose with smooth curves and a small flare is the symbol of kindness, beauty, and good nature. While villains, regardless of gender in Disney and beyond, have the exaggerated normal nose shapes, such as hook or snub. So when these little girls grow up having actual normal noses that they now think are too big, too hooked, too crooked, too flat, to this nut, we got a brand new problem. Normalization. Nose job check. As much as how no one's nose or face is any of my business, I just want to say that a nose job is still a surgery. And surgeries aren't just a easy stroll in the mall kind of deal. Rhinoplasty can change bone, cartilage, skin, or all three. And it's not through some magical pixie fairy dust, but knives and anesthesia. Five things I didn't know I needed post nose drop surgery. Number one, Manuka honey drops because your throat will be super sore from the breathing tube. Breathing tube. What I do like about TikTok is that it is removing the stigmatization of nose jobs and making a more transparent process where people openly share their experiences and complications. I think this is much better than when celebrities get all types of tiny tweaks on their faces and call it a natural glow up when everyone knows the backstory already because your bones and cartilage don't just change every few months. But like I said before, there's a thin line between normalization and almost a promotion. In other words, a flex. Sadly, the not ugly, just poor meme is becoming our reality today, as the beauty industry is widening the class divide more than ever. Hi, my name's Sam, and today I went to this plastic surgeon's office and I told him that I saved up $450 and I really did a nose job. And he looks at me and he laughs at me and he tells me I'm broke. And I was just like, it was, that was too bad. That really hurt my feelings. Because the beauty standards we have are so hard to achieve, 
naturally for the average population. For these traits usually appeal to exoticism and are rare within the social group, to follow the guideline of beauty requires a certain amount of wealth dedicated to the face and body. And the nose is just a small but mighty part of the process. Ever notice how prevalent the celestial nose is in celebrities and now top tier influencers? Where a prereq to being that level of famous almost implies you belong to the same nose club. And everyone is starting to look more and more similar when to me, I find these women gorgeous to begin with. And honestly and truthfully think that their careers would have excelled regardless if they have the standard pretty nose. But as the trendsetters of popular culture, because most celebrities and influencers embody the narrow and petite Barbie nose, as regular consumers living in the 2020s, we begin to normalize that as the standard and see that as a definition of beauty, even though we do not realize that only the minority of people actually have that nose, either naturally or surgically. Appearance has always been a crucial source of differentiation for those with privilege who use their wealth to communicate their social value and set themselves apart from those without. As a result, beauty reflects a class hierarchy and has long been a site of social struggle. While some people have the economic freedom and class standing to engage in beauty work, others are left with the stigma of quote unquote ugliness where ugliness has become the new term of actually being normal. And normal is now the hyper-exaggerated and enhanced reality from works of money. And in return, pretty privilege earns you more opportunities to greater wealth, such as falling into the favor of the beauty algorithm and blowing up on TikTok. And the cycle repeats itself. Thus, more and more of our generation of youths care about appearances because beauty makes money and money makes beauty. So that's a wrap on today's chat about nose jobs. Comment below if you would ever get a nose job. Zero judgment here, okay? Because it's completely personal. If it makes you feel confident and beautiful, by all means, go for it. But there is no guarantee that the ideal shape won't change. And of course, Always do your due diligence because surgeries, big or small, could be dangerous. Thanks for tuning in. I love you all so much and I will see you next week.